Hi, I'm Emma, and you're watching My Birth Way. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, today, I want to give you an update on being eight weeks pregnant. Um, the last update you got was pretty lengthy, and there's a lot of information in there. Um, I'm not feeling all that different than I was last week, um, so this, this update probably won't be as long. Um, just a disclaimer, as usual, if you hear weird animal sounds in the background, it's the dogs, like... Bolt was just chewing on a bone, and just a second ago, they just started barking at each other out of nowhere. Um, so hopefully I won't have to take a break and say, no, stop, in the middle of a video, but that's very possible. Good training for having toddlers, I suppose. Um, so I, in last week's video, I mentioned um, how I had a little bit of brown discharge, and luckily that went away after like a couple days, and which was good news because, it, of course, it was like, you know, it makes you a little nervous because of when I had a lot of brown discharge the very first time we tried to get pregnant and it turned out that it just, the, the baby wasn't implanting. And of course it wouldn't have been that this time. But you know, there's always something you just wanna, you know, check and make sure. And you know, I wasn't really worried, but you know. So that went away, which is really nice. Um, and I, I'll say also my boobs have cont continued to get bigger um, and continue to be like sore and kind of like, whoa. This is, this is crazy. They're not like, I don't think it's as drastic of a change as it was in the beginning when it was like, oh my gosh, but I'm sure it'll change again in the future. That's just the way it is. Um, and I still feel like um, food is, is sitting better with me and I'm digesting better, which is really nice. Um, and still, I feel like I have even less food issues right now. It's just making sure that I eat when I'm hungry. As I said before, like every hour, hour and a half, my stomach starts really rumbling and that's still the case for sure. And I can't just have snacks all day I have to have some real meals like I have to have some snacks in the morning like when I first wake up like eat some fruit usually is what it is and then like like an hour later eat more of a real breakfast and then have a snack and then you know at like 10 or 11 have a, like a second real breakfast you know I need like not just I can't graze all day I have to have I have to graze and then also have some big meals because probably that's just my personality I'm used to super filling up my stomach just because that's the way I roll. I eat a lot at once. And so I think my body's like, uh, hello, you're jipping me. I'm used to getting tons of food at the same time, you know. Um, but I still do need to graze throughout the day. Um, let's see, I'm still sleepy at night. Um, or just ready to go to bed at like 8.30 because we have been able to go to bed earlier. Um, not like super, super exhausted necessarily, but just like, hey, let's just go to sleep. Which is a really good feeling to have the time and energy to do that right now. I think it's a super luxury. Um... And so I think the biggest thing that happened um, was I went to see one of my clients after her baby was born for the postpartum meeting and I got to hold her baby and he was just six days old. Um, and it, it, so it something changed, I think, for me. Um, I mean, before, uh, last time I talked a lot about like being nervous, like, am I gonna be a good mom? Um, you know, what does it mean? You know, all this stuff and um, I just feel less nervous now, like just holding him and watching him like, you know, the baby face, the processing of, of the world that almost makes him look like little drunk old people, <laughs> um, is just super entertaining. I could stare at that all day long. And I, and I was thinking this isn't even my son and I could stare at him all day long learning about the world. It's like so exciting. So I'm not, I'm not as like irrationally freaked out now about oh, what if I don't like my kid? Or what if my kid doesn't like me? Or what if I suck as a mom? You know, I'm feeling a little bit more in sync with what I believed was my natural ability before because I believe everybody can do it. But um, yeah, I just feel more in sync with that right now. So that was that was a really meaningful time. And I actually got to hold him for a really long time because she was running around trying to do a couple other things in the house and I was just watching him. And he was just, you know, in that alert, quiet state where he was just absorbing things. And, and you just look at their face and you wonder... What are they thinking right now? What, what what is that face about? Are they what are they processing? Are they processing that color? Are they processing that shape? Are they actually processing the sound or maybe the way I smell because I don't smell like their mom? You know, that was really really cool and special. Um, and so so what I want to talk about a little bit more today is uh, last week when I talked about going to our place of birth and like you know asking all these questions is I wanted to just kind of. Because I was saying, hey, ask all the questions you want to ask. You should ask them. I, I just kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about, like, what we asked, what I asked. And this, of course, is not, you know, what you should ask. But maybe it would be a good guideline 
um, for you to think about if you're like, hey, what are questions I want to ask? Um, because some of them I asked probably way before I even needed to, but I just, I really like to have all my ducks in a row and know what I'm getting myself into. So I really wanted to know what their policy was and their ideas were about a lot of things and how things would go. So um, I kind of divided my questions into two sections. I had like a question about like the prenatal care and what the appointments would be like. And then I had a section about like what the birth, you know, what the birth would be like. So um, I told you in the last video that we're not planning on doing ultrasounds. Um, that would be classic ultrasounds or Doppler ultrasounds. We're not going to be doing either of those. Um, the reason of, uh, for that is because I'm neither of us, but I especially, we're not convinced that they're safe. Um, there are multiple um, medical bodies that say that they should only be used uh, if, a, if it seems to be for you know, diagnostic something a problem arises, not just out of nowhere, not just to see the gender of the baby or the sex of the baby, not just, you know, to check and see developmental stage, um, that they should only be, uh, like the College of, um, American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologists recommends ultrasound scans for, like, specific reasons, like, we're trying to detect an anomaly that we noticed or, you know, something like that. Um, and I recently found a really good article that I feel like overviews this pretty well, and I'm going to post it on the Our Birthway Facebook page soon. Um, but, and of course, I, I don't judge anyone for if they want to do ultrasounds. Most people get ultrasounds. Most people decide that they really want to see their baby in that way. Um, but I don't feel that I, I am, I'm, I'm not worried about wanting to bond in that way. I, I really, you know, even if ultrasounds were safe, I think I wouldn't want them just because I want to bond um, in a way that is my physical body and my spiritual self connecting with this creature baby, <laughs> um, spiritual entity that's going to be in my life forever without, um, needing to see it because, I, uh, you know, you go back a hundred years, you would never have seen it until the baby was born. And I, and I really want that kind of, that extra added all, I think that I would maybe get having not seen anything about the baby and maybe even seen the face shape and things like that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about not hearing the heartbeat because at a certain, maybe 20 weeks, maybe later, depending on the mom. Um, you can you can hear the heartbeat via like a stethoscope type device that a midwife could use. So like, you know, I'll be able to hear the heartbeat and you know that kind of thing. Um, but I'm just not I'm not convinced that they're safe. Um, they might be, and and I really hope they are. Um, but ultrasounds, you know, affect body tissues by heating them, um, and they do a couple other things to them. And it depends on the skill of the person who's who's doing the ultrasound. Um, it depends on how long they do it. Um, and actually, interestingly, you know, like the Doppler ultrasounds that, you know, the, kind of the handheld devices and things like that, those are actually way more powerful of a energy stream getting sent out because they're a constant energy stream versus the regular ultrasounds just send out a stream at periodically and then they, what, what the sound waves like pick up, the kind of bounce back and makes the, it makes the image. But um, Doppler's different Doppler is constant stream. So like that's, those, that would be even more risky in my opinion for me. Um, the only time that I think I would consider doing um, a Doppler would be like once or twice very briefly for like five seconds during labor to just check the baby's heartbeat during labor. Um, but uh, I need to talk to the birth center about if they are skilled enough in, you know, just listening with the stethoscope type device during labor um, instead of the Doppler. So, you know, those kinds of things that of course I would, I would consent to an ultrasound if it was proven that like, oh, there's a probable complication we need to check. You know, I would I would look into that, Jason and I would think about it and decide what we thought was best. Um, but um, that's just kind of the little the little blurb about that. And if you're interested in more about it, um, you could just Google that information. You would find probably a whole whole list of articles written with some good scientific um, citations in them, referencing articles and studies that you know have talked about uh, what maybe there's a risk in humans and there's a definite risk in animals when they test the animals. So um, anyway, so. So I asked about that and I said, is that something that you're going to have a problem with? And they said, no, you know, that's fine. No ultrasounds, it's up to you.